Yeah. She says yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we can we hear Robin? She's no, muted. She's muted. Yeah. Sure. Great. And is there anyone else on? Are you set up, Robin, to go ahead and take notes? I think she doesn't know she's muted. She muted her. She's going to get a pen and paper, probably. But she said, "Oh, well, she went to get yeah." It's funny. Um, I knew I was muted, but I had to get my paper. <laughs> so now I'll mute myself and be a, a cute. Before you do, um, let me just ask, and we're not calling anything to order yet. If okay. you want to take notes directly on the agenda and then have that as your document, you can do that. Shall I guide you into the Google Drive? Okay. Um, let me minimize my screen, my um, Zoom screen, and go to um, Google Drive. Let's see, I have it bookmarked somewhere. And maybe we'll do that for next time. Let's do it next time. I'll just do um, paper notes. I can type them in later. That that's fine. And I'll review it's, with you afterwards. No problem. Thanks, Robin. That's great. And I apologize. I've had a totally packed afternoon. So um, I hear you. And um, just Andy has shared with us that he needs to leave at quarter to six. So 545. 545. Quarter to six. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, Rick is Margaret signed on. Great. Hi, Margaret. And I see Angela signed on. And yeah, you. Good. what we're looking for only now is Rick. He says he needs to join us remotely. Okay, calling to order. Hello, everyone. Um, let's start as we usually do with our um, welcome and agenda review. Let's do the agenda review first, and then we'll do a little welcome and uh, introductions briefly, um, because we have, as of Thursday evening, Pete Bono is a member of our committee. Um, I hope everyone's had a chance to look over the agenda, and we have a pretty packed one today. Um, is there anything that anyone feels we need to add or change um, before we get started? Something I mentioned that I'm last on the agenda. Maybe I can move, move that you up. up. But just one item. Yep. I okay. Number six, number five, number five, number six. Yeah. That sounds like a good idea. Thank you. Great. So let's just have a brief round of introductions. And this is the part of the recorded meeting that if people have heard this before, they can fast forward. <laughs> but um, for the uh, sake of um, both Pete and other folks who haven't had the chance to hear all of us introduce ourselves to each other, um, let's just share the information that we find is relevant um, and go around the table. So. I am, as chair of CPIC, um, I served for a, about half of the three and a half year period on the update, the comp plan update committee. Um, I live off Forsyth on Twin Pound Road. So I've been very focused on the Androscoggin River lately. And um, I am retired. And my professional background involves fundraising and social work. Um, I was, one of the things I wanted to do was go into urban planning, but it never got beyond the thought stage. So I'm having a good time now. Um, so let's start, just go around the table, just down the table with Joe first and uh, Joe Feely, I served on the uh, Comp Plan Update Committee and now obviously on the, on the Implementation Committee as well. 
Uh, I'm a retired architect and I have lived in Thompson for almost exactly nine years now. Um, and before that, I lived in Waterville, and before that, the uh, apartment um, And I can't think of anything else relevant that would interest me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move on to Pete. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. My name is Pete Bono. Uh, this is my first day on the committee. Um, my wife and I moved uh, to Highland Green on uh, December 15th. So we're new to the community, but uh, very anxious to uh, to learn as much as I can uh, about the town and about CPIC. Um, we worked for 30 years as entrepreneurs. We started our own retail business in, Bar in downtown Bar Harbor. It uh, was very successful and allowed us to, uh, to retire uh, less than a month before COVID. I uh, also uh, uh, volunteered for the town of Bar Harbor, worked on their design review board, so I am familiar with uh, ordinances and uh, and uh, codes and uh, and ways to uh, improve the character of community of community. So I'm delighted in reading Thompson's town uh, a comprehensive plan. Um, very happy to, to see what that involves and the large amount of input from the uh, residents, which is uh, extremely important, which was. Uh, also important for the comprehensive plan in Bar Harbor, which I participated in too. Um, uh, and so um, I look forward to, uh, to working with all of you and uh, have a lot to learn, but, I'm, but uh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. My name is Andy Sturgeon. I manage an engineering company in Yarmouth, a civil engineering company. I'm a resident of Topsom in a new development called Oak Hill, which is up near the water tower. I've been in the land use consulting business for 42 years. I sit on the TDI board, I'm vice chair of the TDI board, and you'll get an update on that later on in today's agenda. Thanks, Andy. Um, why don't we go to Rick? Sure, good afternoon. Uh, Rick Schultz. Uh, been a member of the CPIC since it was initiated following the comp plan. Uh, resident here in Topsom uh, for about 20, 23, 24 years now. Um, wife and uh, children just getting out of the school system. Uh, structural engineer by trade. Uh, and, you know, just digging into this plan. Thanks, Rick. And Angela? Um, welcome, Pete. Just so you know, we all have a lot to learn still. <laughs> um, it's great to have some new members on this committee. My name is Angela Twitchell. I live on Main Street, just down the road from the town office, yet here I am via Zoom. <laughs> um, I am, my day job is the executive director of the Brunswick Topsom Land Trust, and I've lived in Topsom for about 24 years. Um, have four kids who have have been or are going through the Mount Ararat system, and I've served on several town committees um, and am enjoying figuring out how to implement the comp plan <laughs> with the rest of you. Thanks, Angela. Um, and Robin? <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Robin Brooks, and I live uh, in the Ivanhoe neighborhood, which is off of the Lewiston Road, so near the uh, another part of the Androscoggin River, not within eyesight, but we pass it often. And I'm um, a visual artist and Tai Chi teacher in the community. I also um, served in the public schools as a public school uh, elementary art teacher. I had a 40-year career in, in public education. Um, really interested in, um, you know, and have been involved in various capacities in, in shaping, you know, the the, few, the present and future of our town. I've been here for almost 25 years, and I have a, our, my only child, my son, is graduating from basic training in, in Lawton, Oklahoma, this Friday. So I'm here for one more day, and then I go out. Exciting. I'm very excited. <laughs> I am the granddaughter of a civil engineer, Andy, and my, my mother's dad. 
practiced in uh, Boston area, was the chief engineer on the Hancock Towers. And I've always had an interest in, yeah, yeah, interest in um, urban design and community design and, and, you know, the built environment. So glad to be here shepherding this plan into fruition, however it manifests. Yeah. Thanks, Robin. And well, Mark? Hi, um, I'm Margaret Williams. I live in Topsom Heights. I moved here um, about two and a half years ago. Uh, this is my first town committee ever. Um, I was in Portland for six years before this and uh, grew up in Skowhegan. Um, and yeah, my uh, I have a background in biochemistry. I work in chemical compliance. Um, and I'm very interested in uh, permaculture and landscaping and gardening. I'm currently in the Master Gardener Volunteer Program. So happy to join you all. Thanks, Margaret. So why we have um, Mark Walsh here, our assistant manager, and uh, Julie Erdman, the planning director. Why don't you just say a few things, because not everybody may know you as well as I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've lived in Thompson since 1995 over in Bay Park. Do you want to say anything else about your professional stuff before you became assistant town manager? You've been local and important for a while and done important. I don't know about important, but I was uh, worked for the Brunswick Police Department, retired as the commander of support services in 2000, and I came here. That's important. Great. Thank you. And Julie? And I'm Julie Erdman. I'm the, the planning director. I've actually been working for Topsom since mid November. So, so this is all kind of new to me, too. Um, and when I came aboard, I, I was the town planner. The planning director left a little over a month ago. So I've been in that role since then. Um, and he was actually in charge of the, the CPIC um, recode effort as far as, you know, staff. Um, so I'm really kind of sinking in to this now. <laughs> Um, prior to my, my job here, I was in Brunswick as well, um, for about 18 years in that planning office. So, so learning together is the, the word of the day. Right. And, right. and, uh, yeah, we are a team. Okay. Let, do we have any members of the public with us today? I, don't think we do based on my owl check, but we do not. No, okay. So we save a few minutes there. Mm -hmm. um, on to administrative items. Um, we've done that welcome. And um, Pete, is there anything further? Do you have to have some kind of swearing in or are you there good will, to go? I was told there will be no swearing in. Okay. Because we're in an ad hoc. Uh, ad hoc, that's mm -hmm. right. There. Yeah. So, you got me as I am. Great. Okay. So then the next administrative item is the minutes of the April 10th. There's a little typo there. Sorry. April 10th, 2023 meeting. Um, I assume everyone's had a chance to review those. Um, thank you, Rick, for taking those. And uh, is there any error or addition that needs to be made there before we call for approval. Hearing none, I'm going to assume that all of us who are present at that meeting approve these minutes. Yep. Okay. So on to the major part of today's agenda. Um, we left our last, we've had two workshop sessions with Leslie Oberholzer. Um, they were very productive sessions. Um, the first one in March, she actually developed a very detailed agenda of things that she wanted to have either some feedback on or some okay about. And with, she made changes based on those um, items. We went over some boundaries um, focusing on um, sort of tightening in on the annex area um, and 
in the in the April meeting, I think we focused, we talked quite a lot about, we talked some about setbacks, we talked about drive-throughs, we talked about um, fueling stations um, a little bit. And at that point, her feeling based on the feedback so far is that this is a draft ready to present to the public, meaning at this point, um, the, the stakeholders who we need to engage with so that their use of this code um, makes sense to them and us moving forward. Um, so we, we set this one extra one session, we're going to have the time today to dig into that material. Um, and we basically have uh, there's Article 2, Articles 6, 7, and 8, and no changes were made on Article 15, the definitions, although that is going to be a work in pro progress anyway. Um, but Article 2, the Topsom Center Zones, I think is probably the area where we have most of our focus. And I think it was Article ooh, seven that had not been in the previous packet. Not all of that material pertains to the Topsom Center zones, but the, the material that does is stuff that we should at least review quickly today. Um, so looking at, so my sense of how to proceed here is to, I'm calling it up, and I don't know if we want to actually call up this, the document so that we can look at it together on the screen. Would that be easy to do, Julie? <coughs> what I'm thinking is um, that unless people have all made their detailed notes, um, I've made a few, but I have no major concerns at this point. The, and I think it's probably good to just move through that material. We're, we're focusing essentially on what's in red, which is are the changes. Those are the changes. Unless we've noticed something, Unless else. We've noticed something else. And, you know, this is not the last time we get to make comments or suggestions. But if we had, it's it, it would be nice at this point to sort of have all of the basic things we're concerned about addressed, so that when we go into a, a session um, after, say, the developers and landowners and other interested people have had a chance to view Leslie's recording. After they've had a chance to do that, we will schedule at least one and probably two morning sessions um, with those folks. And it, and what we want to do, I think, is if there are things we're concerned about, now is the time to flag them. Um, Question. Yeah. Well, oh, more of a comment. Um, the front page of the crier had a great article um, about. I assume you wrote that. Yeah, right? yeah. With your um, feedback, thank you. Yes, yeah. I did. <laughs> um, the, the adjusted map was on the on the cover yeah. too, and I think that's important because you're going to hear when I get to the TDI report. That's one thing they were totally confused about. Uh -huh. As they're asking for an update about CPIP for me to give them, as I'm giving you one about TDI. But yeah. their biggest, what's where's the zones? And and Derek was at the meeting. He said, "Didn't you see the front page of the crier?" So. I just wanted to say that was a nice, if anybody's yeah. got any questions about the zone, that's the place to go. Right. Although I assume that maps in our Google Drive too. Yes. It's and it's not just in our Google Drive, it's on the town. Okay, right, website, right. There we right. want to make sure that it was yeah. on the town. That's website. right. Um because people have asked about it. And right. so it's we but that article you know, was a great summary of where we are today. Yeah. Not up, not like we're going to get deep in the words here in a few minutes, but in general, that was a good update. So if anybody asks, I've been firing right there. Great. Now is that article or the letter on the website too? Um, 
No, I guess it could be, but you know, it's just an easy read. It's just an easy read for right. common. Yeah. Someone yeah. who hasn't been active or yeah. hasn't been up to date and wondering what we're doing. Yeah. If they could click on that article, man, that brings you right up to speed, in my opinion. It does. It, and that was the point, really, to bring people up to speed. It doesn't talk about the path forward very much, but it does bring people up to speed. So does anybody have, before we sort of got, dig in a little bit to Article 2, just do you have any suggestions about how to proceed with this? Because my sense is just to move through it and to try to stay on our time frame, because I know Andy needs to go and, and bring up questions and concerns as we go. Yes. If it makes sense to you yeah. guys, let's yes. let's go for it. Okay. So article two starts off with with the zones. The big change, and this happened, um, I think this happened in the March meeting, was to divide the Topsom Fair Mall into two zones, one and two. Um, two is the Park Drive area, which has a quite different character, um, and there are some changes in, in terms of what's allowed where. Um, that's the big change on page 2-2. Two any further thoughts about that? I, I had a question related to that. Um, I see that in table 2-1, yeah. we have the Thompson Fair Mall 1 and Thompson Fair Mall 2. Yeah. Um, but then in the next table, table 2-2, two uh, we just have Thompson Fair Mall. Now, mm. if 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 that information is relative to both one and two, perhaps that should say Thompson Fair Mall one and two, mm -hmm. or if one and two are different, that should be different. There should be different. Um, That's exactly yeah. what we want to find. Thank you. <laughs> A little discrepancy. Thank you. That's great. It, it seems to me that unless there is no change between Thompson Fair Mall one and two. Um, you know, and I think there is, we need to add that here. So I will flag that for Leslie. Yeah. Thank you. Any other thoughts on this first couple of pages here? Okay. Um, So the next thing that comes up as we're scrolling um, page 2-5, we were talking a little bit before the meeting. Um, we're looking at 2.40.9, which is minimum streetscape area, item A, which Julie has up on the screen there, it talks about streetscape depth. And we we turn this around, each of us giving our own interpretation, but it's not totally clear what is being called for here. Um, so I think we need to, unless there's someone in Zoom land who can explain this, who sees it more clearly than all of us in the in-person side of life, um, I think we need to just ask for clarification here. I I agree. I mean, it, the fact that there's any question at all indicates we need a clarification. I think you know, it yeah, should be easy for people to right. read it and understand. Right. So we need to add something there. Um. Yeah, Mark. Um. Yeah, along that same line, because otherwise our setbacks are all from property lines. So it would be good if it's something different for these this the form based code part to be real clearable that it's different. Um, and then an easy one on the 2.40.9 C, it says a public easement must be dedicated where the sidewalk or trail will be located on private property. Um, I think we should request to be changed to must be offered for dedication because the either in town meeting or the select board would have to accept something. Um, 
the past couple of years, we've had a housekeeping item at the end that allows the select board to accept easements. But absent that, it actually have to be accepted at town meeting, which may have made that decision is made by the, the town meeting body. So an easement needs to be accepted at or town meeting. Public easement must be offered for dedication. We won't say where, because depending on if we have that housekeeping article, the select board could accept it. If we don't, it would have to go to town meeting. Okay, great. All Can right. I ask a clarifying question about that one? So sure. I live here on Main Street, and there's a certain amount of our yard that we own, but that's the public right of way where they can certainly go ahead and put a sidewalk in there. That's not what this is referring to. I think this is talking about if maybe as part of a project, they've got a trail that they put across it or a sidewalk okay. that goes um, a different direction. So the intent, I guess, is that it be made permanently public, which certainly is a good intent, but mm -hmm. the most that could be forced to be done is to force them to offer it. Like when the Highlands tip for Mountain Road, part of their tip agreement said that they have to offer it for dedication, but ultimately it's still the town meeting's decision whether it wants to accept it or not. Yeah. So just in, in terms of town ordinance structure, it has to be offered rather than will be located. Right. Yeah. Any further thoughts? Did that in, answer you? Um, Angela or not? I think so. I mean, I understand that part of it. That word change makes sense. I just don't want people to think that, you know, I mean, the town could go ahead and put a sidewalk in front of my house and no, I don't have to offer them an easement. They have that right already. Exactly. I just want to make sure people know that. <laughs> right. And I think in terms of your particular property, then, you know, um, letter A makes more sense in terms of what's the streetscape depth here that we're talking about in terms yeah. of setback and whatever, if you were wanting to build something additional. Yeah. Okay. So on page two, basically, or three or four, what we're already, we've got three things to talk to Leslie about. Um, anything further on that page before we move forward? On the next page, we, which is two dash six, the items that were discussed and where changes were made have to do with the Topsom Fair Mall 2 zone and the Topsom Fair Mall 1 zone in terms of what is allowed there in terms of building types by zone, by right, or by planning board permission or not allowed at all. So all of those I mean, a lot of them, those changes have to do with the suburban storefront building. And some of it, the traditional storefront building is now allowed in the Topson Fair Mall 2 area, as is the general building, the row building, and even the workshop warehouse building. So several changes were made there in our workshop. Any concerns or thoughts about that? Yeah. Did you have a question, Andy, about uh, in a previous meeting about the suburban storefront building uh, for the Crooker District? Or well, it, right now it's by planning board approval. Right. So that, I just want to make sure it's available. Yeah, okay. 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 And, and again, not not knowing what's going to be there. It's more mm -hmm. the unknown that scares me. Sure. Yeah. If I knew we were going to do that, then if they were going to do that, then I could dig deeper, but I just hate to exclude something we don't know. So yeah, it right. has its opportunity. Right. Is there is the opportunity. And I think one of the things that was very clear that came out in the the plan update with the drawings, the drawings are not prescriptive, but they're illustrative. And um, what, what people don't want in the Crooker site is another Tops and Fair Mall. Mm -hmm. so, Whatever we do there, it's going to be done differently than the Thompson Fair Mall. One is enough. Um, okay, looking further on. Rick? Uh, yes, I've got a question for on table two, three. I see, um, if I'm reading this correctly, the workshop and warehouse building is not included in the annex. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And the, I think the reason there is that we pull those boundaries yeah. in. So oh, because those, we move the boundaries. Okay. 
the light okay. industrial area is now no longer within the Thompson Center form based code zones. It's primarily residential. Some okay. commercial activity is allowed, but it's and it's it's nicely described. It's a residential zone right. anchored by schools, you know. And it's it's quite it's quite reduced in size too. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. I thanks. just have I feel like we talked about this at one of the workshops, and so there's probably a clear answer, but I don't remember. It feels a little weird to me that civic buildings aren't allowed anywhere. They're only allowed by planning board approval. And I just am wondering why that is. Do we sample? Well, you mean the civic building? What, give me an example. This. Yeah, I mean the, the town office, oh. the I mean the post office is a civic building, the churches are civic buildings. Oh, civic. I, civic. I'm yeah, sorry, I think I, I, I think you civic. just we just I you said the assumption is that we want more control over that. It's not to exclude them; it's to have some level of control, and um, it probably would have to do with their location um, and and whether that's an appropriate location given what's going on on either side and nearby. Is my sense. Um, if we want more clarification, I'm glad to try to reach out to Leslie for that. Want a little more clarification, Angela? I think it's well, no, not if you guys are all good with it. It just seems like, for instance, like Middle Village, that's where we have all our civic buildings. <laughs> you think that we would want to have them be allowed there, but I'm okay if everyone else is okay. I just wanted to ask. And of course, they will be. I think that's the thing: is they will be with with planning board approvals. So, if it's an appropriate building to be in the middle village or the upper village, it it, it will be approved. Does it? Do you have any concerns with it, Shuler? I don't. I mean, I I guess I I could see them really going in a lot of those things, but I I yeah. I think it would be fine to just have an important. I'm I'm gonna reach out for some clarification, see what we can get. Back on there. Okay, thanks, Angela. Um any other thoughts before we move on? Okay. Now I have nothing further no thoughts you know that i've outlined i'm just scrolling along to see where we have new code in red or new text and page 2-13 there's one the uh, right. ground story front facade transparency was changed from 75 percent to yeah. 65. Right. And I think we had some discussion on that. Mm -hmm. And I think folks were, I think that was by CPIC input. There was some, mm -hmm. you know, to allow for some flexibility there as a requirement, not to require 75 percent. Mm -hmm. Given your um, design standards background, Pete, any thoughts about that? Uh, no, I think, I think that's a fairly small change. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And speak up if there's any concern. Otherwise, I'm going to keep scrolling. Okay, the next big. There's see. a minor one on what page is this? Uh, 2 19, the uh, 2.120 um, the chart. Huh. Uh, vertical dimensions with shadow lines, uh, right? One for every 80 feet. I think that was uh, reduced from 100. It still seems big to me, but. Um, I have to trust less of one of this. Okay, and we're talking about the workshop warehouse specific regulations. 
So this is a very specific building type. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, no, that's probably fine. I forgot about that. No concerns? Okay. We've covered a lot of pages here. Um, although we have 29 pages, <laughs> 10 more to go in this article. Uh, let's see. Maybe we'll finish 15. <laughs> we could. We could. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> the next one I have is two uh 2.140.11. Which page? Uh this would be page two dash twenty-eight. Okay. It's under um, building type locations. Uh, there appears to be an addition for the Crooker uh, Crooker District. So we're looking at that. Okay, got it. Building type locations. We're yeah. looking at the Crooker District changes. Yeah. So we're saying that. And this is all master plan development territory. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at a mix of building types, and we're saying that in the Crooker district, the building types allowed are not subject to any minimum mix, except that the use of the suburban storefront building is limited to no more than a 20,000 square foot footprint by right with the additional footprint allowed by approval of the planning board. And so again, allowed. Yeah, and I see a lot of courtyards with those two. Just, you know, that's something that is that part of the footprint. I, I don't look at it as part of, and the footprint to me is the building. Yeah, that's right. right. Part of and when we add courtyards, I think we've got some flexibility. Yeah, there. that's, yeah, I, I would think any reasonable interpretation is that would be open space. Correct. Mm -hmm. Any um, thoughts on that material from Zoomland? Then the annex is limited to uh, 10,000 10, square feet. Right. Uh, wait a minute. The use of the village building for commercial or mixed use is limited to no more than. Yeah, mm. and that's simply to limit there is so there is commercial but activity but that's right there might never be there might never be that's right probably yeah it's nice yeah. to have that option yes there is a change back on page two two dash nineteen I think we talked about we, that we, we I just was yeah, that was the table with the uh, eighty feet, the um, ver vertical divisions with yeah, shadow yeah. lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah, and and that that you know we sort of clarified that that's for the workshop warehouse specific. Okay. Well, then, Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. So going back to page, where are we? Okay, so any concerns or thoughts about this um, master plan development section, building type locations, Crooker District Annex, or anything else? Mark has brought up a couple of things. Yeah. On the, let's see, 2.140, yep. parents one travel lanes. Um, it says two way travel lanes of 10 feet should be provided for active areas. Something the fire chief's always been asking when other areas been looked at is at least 12 feet fire lanes for what he says is part of the National Fire Protection Association recommendations. Uh -huh. Got to get the trucks through. Uh huh. Um, so I, I've got that. We're on page 2 28. 2 26. 26. Okay. 26. Is, is that necessarily true for all streets, Mark? 
or, or different I, I, street standards say that for minor roads you you have to have a minimum of 10 feet oh okay major roads is supposed to be 12. 12 thank you um and that single shared 14 foot two-way travel land would not be mm -hmm. okay so let's focus on this just to see like where of the so it's the very first thing on that page so we're looking at page 2-26, the very top, travel lanes, two-way travel lanes of 10 feet should be provided for active areas. So do we need to distinguish between major and minor? <laughs> I mean, we certainly don't, there are there are smaller streets that are not that wide. And yeah, maybe that's what we ask is that it, the two-way travel lanes for active areas be changed to 12, mm -hmm. and then, Single shared. I don't think probably. I mean, I have to ask Chris this, the fire chief, but I have a feeling he's probably not going to be thrilled with single shared on any street <laughs> when you try to get trucks in an emergency. That, that's an odd, feels odd to me, but I, I may have experienced it and not known that it was 14 feet. I mean, if we go with what Julie said, we have in our current streets of 10 feet for the other streets, it mm -hmm. seems like that would be workable. And this is in the master plan development, right? So, mm -hmm. um, well, we wouldn't want, say, really dense, the quicker cut up into maybe some residential areas that yeah. only have 14 foot streets, you know, when you have an emergency. When it's shared. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what we want is, is what, do, what would we like that change to be? And it would be great for, so this is what our fire chief is suggesting, that the 10 feet be changed to 12, right? Right. And that the four, that there not be any 14? Don't we call streets major and minor? Maybe we just have the minor streets, and I'd have to run this by the fire chief, but maybe the minor streets are 10 feet lanes, two 10 feet lanes, and the major streets are two 12, 12 mm -hmm. lanes. That makes sense. Experience to me is the majors have to be 12. Mm -hmm. right. I don't know what the minors but the majors have to be 12. Good catch. Okay. Any thoughts from others? Sounds like there's not much of an option. <laughs> but and the fire, unless we want to get smaller fire trucks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So and it's even not the trucks themselves, it's trying to pass by other cars. Right, or right. Parking. parking. That's right. So are we okay with everything else on page 2-26? Yep. Anything else there, Mark? Just my personal um, prejudice from working at the police department back in Brunswick 10 years ago yeah. is under 2.1402C. I would just strike in the back end or. So it says head in angled parking is acceptable. Ah. Is when uh -huh. friends tried to experiment with it, no one understood what was going on, and it was putting people head on in the wrong direction. Right? So, <laughs> uh, to see head in angled parking only, no backing in. Right. Any opposition to that? It was dangerous to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally support. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Okay. Thank you. Um, and th does that do it, Mark, for that page? Yep, it's all I good. Okay. So going on to, we're talking about different types of open space and trails. Um, the next thing, we've already discussed the Crooker District, and I think folks are fine with the way that turned out on page 2-28. And then we have the page of a, an illustrated possibility for the master plan development in the Crooker site on page 2-29. And that is it for article two. All right, how are we doing for time? <laughs> um, so on to article six, which, yeah, Rick. So I'm gonna just ask, it's gonna be a can of worms we make table this if we want to but if you can go back to just like uh 
212 or any of the pages in there, a general question I have is the form-based code, one of the things early on that was kind of billed at was that it's a very visual representation and the photographs are representative of the various building types and stuff. And over the course of jiggering the words and the maps and everything, it seems like that has been minimized. And have we really looked at the photos for each of these building types that are they representative of what we're looking for? Well, there, yep. well, one of the things that we did is there was some simplification yep. and um, rather than restricting certain building types in certain zones, we broadened things out and allowed a wider array of building types in various zones. And so yep. I think, I mean, there's certainly more illustrations and charts and photographs in this code than in our current code. <laughs> and are there, when you're looking at it, Rick, um, are there any particular photographs that are problematic for you? No, it, it, it's actually, it was just something that dawned on me. I haven't really looked closely at the photos for quite a while. Um, it just dawned on me as we were skimming through here and noticed the uh, noticed some of the photos and some of the changes over time. And it was really more a question like, hey, maybe we want to just touch on that in a later workshop. I think that's a good idea. Maybe even ask Leslie to take a, can you just take a quick peek? She might have not looked at that for a year. Yeah. I mean, I, these, these, I, these pictures are a couple of years old or a year and a half old. That is true. Right. Just wouldn't hurt. Good. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, she, you know, when you're saying, well, what is a village building? She's got that photo. Right. You well, know, it, it might take her two minutes to answer the question. I'm just saying, so be nice. let's just be clear. What is the question? <laughs> Can you please take a look at the visual, visual. And see if they're still in line with, okay. with the narratives that we've changed quite a bit? Right. And, and not, not just the visuals, because not, we're not talking charts, we're talking photos. Right. Photos. Yeah. Well, sketches and photos. Uh, you've got an example right there. Right now you've got a sketch and you've got a photo. Mm. Just are right. still are those yeah. samples of buildings still still um, are, are still uh, relative to the narratives. Yeah, worth asking. Uh, I have a feeling. Yeah, I think we should. Yes. Uh, I think we should look too, right? I mean, I, I'll be honest. I haven't looked that close. We, we had at some point, you know, this goes back more than a year ago, uh, we did look uh, at this as an issue and some some things have been changed, but we've made more changes since then. So I, I agree. I think we should go back. And look at it. I mean, I remember when we spent a lot of time in the lower village. Yeah. I, I don't think with some nodes much. and yeah. I and I think the the. In the April workshop, we had a, a moment, and I appreciated, you know, Angela's drawing our attention to it, that, you know, the, the discussion that we had over a, a couple of meetings, but particularly one meeting with Leslie, Kate was tasked with describing what that guidance would be to Leslie from that meeting. And Kate did that. I've seen the, the memo um, and I think it's a, it's a considerable piece of work for us to revisit that um, because there was some real simplification of zones. You know, the, there was an effort, I think, with Leslie to build on to build nodes around existing buildings and we wanted to step away from that level of control and allow allow a little bit more flexibility um, and this is what we've got 
<laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think that's what we're that's not my understanding of what we're talking, talking about. about. Okay. I think it's just to uh, do the the, the, the pictures, the visual representation of what we want. Uh, is that accurately reflecting uh, what's written? Okay. What's in the text? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. We will ask the question, get it answered. And I'll, I'll, I'll go back through them and take a look also. Okay. So that that's a general question. With What we'll do is I will work with Robin, who's doing the notes, to pluck out the specific questions for Leslie. And um, we'll, we'll get those clarified over the next two or three days. Um, okay, where I am is in the start of uh, Article 6. We're talking about allowed uses. And we're on page 6-2. And there was a change there where something's absolutely deleted. The, the thing about permitting uh, what? Something in upper stories only. Um, I mean, that's in our current zone code. You can't have residential on the ground floor in certain mixed use areas or commercial areas. And I think we're, we're just removing that as a, as a restriction. And it's come up before as an unwanted restriction. Right. So removing it's a good thing. Any thoughts about that? Okay, moving on to big chart in six step on page six dash three. Lots of stuff uh, and the tops and fairmole one and two are there together because apparently Leslie is clear right there that these uses are not different for mm -hmm. those two areas. And I would just, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that appears in red. Anything, Julie or Mark, that comes up to you as concerns? You almost wonder why we separated yeah. two tops of proposals if we're going to have all the same uses in both. I thought that was part of the reasoning behind it is that we didn't want the same uses. So, well, of course, these, let me see. If, yeah, these are uses. Um, I thought we, we don't have the same uses. We've got something a lot. Yeah, remember what the difference is. Yeah. yeah. The, this the current area that's in the Thompson Fair Mall two is um just part Hancock of the lumber, sorry, Hancock lobster, gourmet lobster, some small um manufacturer, maybe manufacturing not the right word. Good way. But more more commercial type flavor. But not big. Right. So did we reduce the building size in those that song? There was something we allow them, we allow different building type in that zone, but all the same uses. So I guess you're oh, using... okay. So okay, so the uses are the same, but types. Are different. For example, the I think one of the things is we don't want the suburban storefront in the tops and fairmall too. That's by right, type or use. That's right. That's okay. So that that distinguishes. Because if you didn't have it, then everybody would. So yeah, I almost think you left something out. I almost think the thought was more that it wouldn't be residential in the the park drive, you know, the park that's tops and two. And there and there which, is there is residential multifamily being built there. Right now. I thought we were gonna put the border though at the end of the driveway so that it would be going north from the driveway of the current project. From that would be just be like the, the commercial that piece. whole park drive is one zone yeah, but right but we talked about putting yeah, the split I remember that and we're talking about putting that split on that little teeny road that connects Mallet drive and park yeah okay. mm -hmm. i can't remember the name but what's our uh prior map show 
How about if we ask Leslie to yeah, clarify? Like, and, 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 and to just help me with the with what are we asking Leslie to clarify? Like what is the difference between toxin thermal one and two? Yeah. Okay. All right. If I could just weigh in, it seemed to me that the light manufacturing was tops and fair mall too, the um the road where the lobster manufacturing places and also uh, Morningstar um marble, all of those, you know, sort of mid-sized to small manufacturing kinds of places as opposed to um retail or direct service retail, which is the traditional mall on yeah. the you know, Topsom Mall Road. And I'm not sure how this, it's a little hard for me to read on, on my laptop how the, the um, code reflects as it's written here, but we could, I think probably make sense to ask Leslie to kind of make sure, go with the fine tooth comb, make sure that, that this table reflects that. <laughs> okay, good. All right, how are we doing on time? We're doing all right. Um, Could somebody uh, briefly uh, remind me what the difference between public one and public two is? Hmm. Are those those are parks. Is that not park? All right, that that's was, another question. Yeah, that's another question. Hmm. But once. Oh. Okay. I don't know if this is the can of worms we want to get into, but I noticed that addiction treatment facilities are limited to conditional only in the BP zone. And then group housing could be basically about anywhere in town. So I think of Brunswick's battle over the homeless shelter. Oh, and yeah. do we want to have a definition of homeless shelter and have make it conditional in certain zones as opposed to a blanket thing anywhere? That had been one of my questions previously, too. So that's going to be coming up in this particular chart, right? In this. So table. right now, there's no separate definition. So it's just considered group housing, which is group living under residential, can be practically all through town. There's a few places that's conditional. Right. But, and whereas the addiction center is in the back or the next page yeah. under the other, and that's just one place in all of town, conditional. Not that they're exactly the same, but they have some common characteristics. And where is BP? Because that's commercial industrial, so that is outside the, the center zone that we're really focused on. I think that's going to come up, right? frankly, in the planning board's review. Mm -hmm. And that's outside of our jurisdiction, if that's, you know, the, our, because if it's coming up, in the, the BP, that's not the form based code center of town right. area. So I think you know we can we can ask this question, but what we want to do here, I think, is stay as tight as we can to the center of town form based code areas um, and trusting that that's going to come up. And um, so right now, under this, you could put a homeless shelter in any of our form based code areas. areas by right, because it's group living. So do we want that? Maybe we do, maybe we don't. So you're seeing that we can we can put that, okay. Anywhere. Can you scroll to where he's referred to the group? Yeah, is that the, she's got there. It is got it. Oh, yeah. There. yeah. So we're looking at group living, which it's allowed everywhere in the center of town zones. It's allowed only with permission in the residential zones, and then it is allowed in the MUL and the RCU and light industrial and public too. So that's, I think one of the questions that we're asking is, um, is group living the same as, as homeless shelter? And if 
I mean, what, have you looked at the definition? Yeah, market? Because, because we don't have a special definition just for homeless shelter, yeah. unlike addiction resource center, right. which we do. Yeah. Then it just it follows be. under the definition yeah. of group living because so it's a like common kitchen. Define that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and there may be reasons why you want to have, say, group living in a light industrial zone if you have maybe almost like a boarding, you know, kind of the old Pajemskit mill where you had the people live in the yeah, boarding, boarding house near the mill. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. maybe we're going back to the future in some ways, but we might not necessarily want, at least without some special approvals, a homeless shelter yeah. in a place. So any thoughts about that? I, I will convey that to Leslie in terms of it sounds like we ought to define a homeless shelter there. Mm. And the planning board, I'm sure, will be going to take that on as well. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on this chart before we move forward? I'm realizing that we um, we are not going to get through this today. <laughs> um, Just a quick question for Mark, Susan. Yeah. Um, do we have currently a homeless shelter in Topsom? to your knowledge not to my knowledge okay, thank you and i'm also wondering is i'm assuming since these aren't red this is how it is in the existing use table is that correct correct yeah okay but just thinking back when they tried to put the new one in brunswick and they had to put a moratorium and all kinds of stuff it seems like if we're rewriting this it might be worthwhile to give that thought in and you know, deal with it in advance <laughs> rather than have to deal with it later when it's an emergency and the, the local resistance to group living, group homes, really depends on what the what the group of people are. Right. Um, and yeah, you know, a homeless shelter I can see being much more controversial in a in a established neighborhood than uh, than people with uh, who who are you know mentally challenged, let's say, mm -hmm. and need some oversight. Yeah. Because we do like getting into the smart. the text on this next section, we're looking at residential use group, you know, six point three zero, you know, this whole page. The um, the only change there is removal of a requirement for a fifty foot landscape buffer between um, properties. Um, but this is where the, the text. Is also important, you know, that we're, we're not just looking at the chart and how this is, these things are defined. Um, so, that does anyone else want to just weigh in thoughts if, as we're conveying this to Leslie in terms of it's possible that we should have a defined homeless shelter um, and where that goes? Um, it, it's, it well, seems I'm going to just weigh in and say that that is the kind of decision that's above our pay grade. And what I'm comfortable with is keeping it as it is in the current use table. And if the town higher <laughs> select board or others want to change it, then they could change it. That's this seems really not central to what we're trying to get done with these this plan. That's my, and I think it's good to anticipate things, but I think that's not what C think is able to weigh in on. I I think that that goes back to kind of a follow up of what Tom Lister presented last month was policy change versus administrative change. Yeah, yeah, and if the policy change is one that is being called for in the comprehensive plan. That's one thing, but that's not the case here. That's not the case here. There's nothing in the comprehensive plan that says we want this. And I, 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 just, I understand the need to anticipate challenges in the future, but I think probably we should back off that, even that question. Um, and if the planning board, you'll be there, Mark, when the planning board takes it up. Um, so I'm feeling like we need to move to Andy's, um, and I hate to say it, but I, how much, how much more do we have? We have articles six, seven, and eight. Two was the longest. 
Yeah, and let's just plug it in. Because keep, keep plugging in and see if we can't get through. Okay. The thing that the first thing I see in Article Six is on page six eleven, which is where there's a little addition under the short term rental category. There's an item that's that's added: short term rental, all or a portion of a residential dwelling unit offered for rent to overnight guests for fewer than 30 consecutive days. So it it sort of defines that lodging subcategory as a short-term rental, which I think we probably don't currently have in our <clears throat> code. So, yeah. Any concerns about that? I know that there's been a lot of conversation mm -hmm. about short-term rentals up and down the coast. So what are we saying, I guess? Um, I think just, aren't we just, uh, isn't the intent just to define, define it? As, that's right. Something I think less than 30 days. Mm -hmm. Is that yep. what we're saying? That's right. Yeah. Um, are we outlawing it or are we just? No. Nope. No, nope. it's just definite. I, okay. My take on it is that it's just definitional that um, yeah. that old Older codes didn't have it because, as a viable uh, business venture, it, it didn't exist. I know a lot of towns are struggling. Yeah, it. yeah. I live in two different communities, and it's six months. Right. You can't, you oh, can't rent really? it less than six months. Wow. I'm okay, or where we live down in Florida. So yeah. this draft says it's okay in all of the form based zones. And then it's conditional in the other residential zones and top some right. conditional in some of the industrial or sorry, a mixture of conditional and by right in the commercial industrial zones. Yeah. It's essential that it be defined. Mm. Right. And this is not in the definitions, but it's in the code that relates to lodging. So there's a description of lodging and there are subcategories of lodging, mm -hmm. bed and breakfast ends are defined and then short-term rental is defined. So that's that's all it is. Um, and, and say that again, Mark, in terms of where it's allowed. It looks like from page 6-3, it's allowed in all of the form-based code zones. Yeah. It's conditional in the other residential zones in town. And it's a mixture of conditional or by right in all the commercial industrial zones yeah. based on this draft. Right. And if there would be a change in that, that would be a policy change of some significance that is beyond what we're focused on. Um, I, I, I almost, Julie, um, probably Tom's up. This may be a policy change, and then I'm not sure we get people, make people get condition, you know, approval anywhere in town currently, right? Mm -hmm. For short term. Right. Right. For, so this is made, this is in essence tightened a little bit than current what we do. Like we don't give licenses for it or anything. So if somebody wanted to convert their house to an Airbnb, there's nothing. Right now, there's nothing to stop you in process. So um, this would make it conditional yeah. in some zones. In some zones, but the zones that we're focused on today, <laughs> there's no policy change going on. So we'll leave that other stuff to the other so, folks. So moving forward. That's right. <laughs> Okay, moving to page nothing on 6 12 or 13 or 14. Well, this is moving quickly. I mean, unless someone has. Um, Susan, the reason yep. I'm deferring is I'd rather see you go through this because I can always send everybody a written some update of TDI. I'd rather see you get through. Yeah. This yep. time I have to start it up again in another meeting. Yeah. At least do this, this version. So, and so I we have time, fine. We don't. I have nothing flagged in my notes on Article 7. Um, no, that's not true. On Article Six, so we've gotten through Article Six. Unless there's something that someone else has flagged in Article Six, there's nothing new that we haven't already talked about, and I've not flagged anything. I flagged a few things in um, Article Seven. There's quite a lot in here about um, the drive-throughs and the fuel pumps. So. Um, 
Let's just see the first thing we come to here on page seven dash two. There is a little, just a little footnote that says um, accessory dwelling units must be allowed pursuant to LD 2003. And those rules are still being yeah. developed, right? So mm -hmm. that's, you know, the, this code has been drafted based on what's available now. now. They may change the name of that too. And we may have to uh, talk about changing it. So there's an LD 203 column or something else. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying, yeah, you may have to change that at some time. Okay. So, I mean, we have stuff on our town meeting warrant to make Thompson compliant. So we'll match the yeah. statute as of hopefully right. May 30th. So I have a tiny thing here, and it's really semantics, is on page 7-3, item 7.20.8. There is a reference to a zoning enforcement officer. Should we call him a code enforcement officer? Mm -hmm. um, just to be consistent. And, um, and then... On the same page, second column, we've got minor home occupations. Uh, let's see, I think it's actually in this, the next page, item C. Um, and this is just grammar. A minor home occupation must be carried on by a residence, plural, of the dwelling unit. So I would think by, by a resident, no plural, or or multiple residents, either one, but just yeah. to sort of correct that. But that's a, I mean, it's, I think these are all consistent with our current code. Um, any, oh, and there, there's, so, okay, so here's something on this page, some new stuff on page 7-4. Is this consistent now with our code? Um, item I, no outdoor display of any material or merchandise is allowed in conjunction with a minor home occupation. It looks like she's saying that that's new. I, I don't know. I know in Brunswick that was the case, but I also don't know. I think it makes sense. sense. Makes sense to me. <laughs> and, and there are a number of um, categories that are prohibited from minor home occupations, restaurants, lots of stuff. It's all listed out there. And then the other item K, which is deliveries or pickups of supplies or products associated with a minor home occupation are allowed only between eight and eight and vehicles used, blah, blah, blah. That all makes sense to me, but it is new material that she's added. Um, Robin? So if somebody wanted to sell flowers, let's say from their garden, they wouldn't be able to put an outdoor display. Residential zone. Mm -hmm. in, our, in our, I know, um, housing, well, our association where we live, we can't even, you can't do it, you can't have a home. Well, occupation, right. even a minor home even occupation. Even a minor home. You right. can't have any deliveries or anything like that. But so so this would and this doesn't apply to the rural area, correct? Or does it? I'm just saying. So you you live in kind of follow up on. I can't remember who just. This probably applies it. to everyone. This part of the code. Yeah, it kind of concerns me because we do have, for example, you know, the big farm that sells um, benches, and um, you know, there there are a number of rural you know, people that have home businesses that might want to sell vegetables or they might want to sell flowers or some eggs. Yeah, no, I guess yeah, I was looking yeah. at just in, in town, but once you throw that rural back mm -hmm. in there, I would hate to see someone, well, Bissons. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. a great example. They sell beef and they've got displays outside. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, matter of fact, during the pandemic, they had the table out there and that's how you bought your beef. So, right, so but they don't actually. They have signs in their windows. They, they don't, don't have display. But I'm trying to think of the name of the farm family, one of the original tops on Catans Road that sells benches. And, oh, Watley. Oh, you're talking about Hunter, Hunt, the Hunter family, and they have a, a big display out there of the things they sell. 
I wouldn't want to restrict that. So, and what I'm looking for is that where is the use table that allows all this stuff? Um, so let's just let's just flag this. Sure. Um, so we're looking at seven point. Good question. Yeah. Because it's it, it could be a slippery slope too. Um, people might want to put up a spot, even if it was permanent. Um, that might be viewed as objectionable in a rural, in a residential neighborhood, whereas if somebody just had a display of flowers for sale, it wouldn't be objectionable. Right, and if it's a sign that is put up occasionally when those flowers yeah. are available and taken down, and like other people have an egg sign when the eggs are yeah. available, um, I think this is not going to be germane to the center of town, but I think it's something worth flagging to make sure that that's the case. It's gonna, it, yeah. yeah, it's gonna come up in the planning board chapters, um, I think. So if it's all right, let's let those lie, ask the question in terms of where they apply. So we- Susan, I'm yeah. gonna head out, but I will give you a written report. Okay. We'll get updated by Andy between meetings. Um, so we're not going to. News. Oh, yeah, it's all good. Okay. You know, TDI, is doing, T, TDI is doing a great job. Wonderful. And there's a lot of good stuff we were reading this week for. That's so great. We we'll look forward to that, Andy. The only thing I was going to say is we, we, we're kind of a quasi governmental organization. I know that the state won't let us <laughs> use that term, but. And we have three hundred and thirty thousand dollars to spend, so a lot of opportunity. That's right, more than right. we have. <laughs> well, ask us for something. We'll do. I just wanted to note, Susan, that yeah. rural home occupations is a separate category. Uh, there, there are different okay. requirements for rural home occupations. Great, great, and so I think we're going to be looking at different types of signs and things like that. There, good. All right, so we'll flag that. Um, the thing I think that is worth taking up here is um, there's a lot of changes on page 7-5 in Article 7, and it deals with parking, it deals with facade design, it deals with um, drive-throughs. So, we're looking under with parking structures um, and sh she footnotes each time there is a proposed. So I'm assuming that these are in a sense, these are changes. These are, you know, changes to current zoning as a, based on how form-based code works. And the first thing is in 7.40.2, building type regulations. Accessory parking structures may occur only on lots with general or traditional storefront buildings in the Thompson Fair Mall, Crooker District, and Annex zones. Now, I'm not sure why it's allowed in the Annex zone, <laughs> frankly. Um, if the annex zone is primarily residential with limited commercial, why are we allowing accessory parking structures? Because we're not talking about a garage. What, what is an accessory parking structure? Well, do we want to go to our definitions? Isn't that probably left over from yeah. when uh, the annex was a far bigger area and included the industrial the schools? Would you like to hear yeah. the definition? Yeah, yeah. It is a use or structure, so a use or structure, that is customarily found in conjunction with the principal use of the structure of, of the property and that is incidental and subordinate to the principal use or structure. The term incidental in reference to the principal use or structure shall mean subordinate and minor in significance to the principal use or structure. Accessory uses when aggregated, so it sounds like it's it could be a lot and not just the parking garage. Or right. something. Yeah. Maybe it's in there because of the school, because you know, the school's mm -hmm. got parking lots, and that's part of the annex. So maybe it's a question for Leslie. Yeah, yeah I think it's a question for Leslie. Um, 
Is anybody else concerned about that? Because if I'm the only one concerned about that in the annex zone. I would just confirm with her that it uh, was something that wasn't caught when we reduced the, the zone. Right. Yeah, and I would, you know, the concern I have would be that I don't see the um, uh, where workshop and warehouse listed in the areas where it may occur. Where are you, Rick? So 740.2. Okay. It was some general tradition historic. Oh, so you, you're suggesting that other building types ought to be listed? Right. Yeah, I was just wondering if is it is it missing the workshop um workshop warehouse is one of them where it may occur. Or is there a specific reason that one's left off? Okay. All right. You know, we can check for that question. Okay. So in that next column, in the section called Additional Regulations 7.40.4, facade design is eliminated. And I think that's because we taught we changed something about primary street frontages or something. I don't know, but it's it's removed. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah. And I any concerns about that being removed? I am not. Just the typo above that, Susan. The top of the page on the right, it says 7.50 yeah. parking structures. I think she probably meant to put 7.40. She must have renumbered something. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. Top of 7.50. Thank you. <laughs> We'll catch all that needs to be changed. We, you know, for the next round of things, we want we want it to be as smooth sailing as we can. So, moving on to drive-through facilities. Um, for any of you who either watched the select board meeting when I gave the update um, or were present for that, there were some questions around drive-throughs. Um, and um, one of the questions was, you know, does CPIC think that it has the right to limit drive-throughs? And the thought was, you know, things have changed with the pandemic. There's a lot more use of drive-throughs. And, um, you know, my response basically was, you know, in, in certain zones, the concerns around limiting drive-throughs came to some extent from the Main Street plan. And we were reflecting those. And then in the Crooker district, um, they are allowed, but there is there is some limiting. So I read these earlier. I have no problem with them. They're all in red, so they pop right out. If anybody has reviewed them and has concerns, let us know. I hear none. Great. Hot dog. On to the next page. Um, so there's a little delineation here under fuel pumps 9.60. Let's see. Pops and thermal one zone. But no, that's about drive throughs, right? Yeah, 9.60 with yeah. fuel pumps. Not the right number there. Um, it's fuel pumps. It, why is it not? It, it should be 7.6 on oh, the top of the page. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. 
All right. Okay. Um, That's another for Leslie to fix that. And then in the second column, building type and zone fuel pumps are allowed only in toxin thermal one zone and must occur only on a lot with a suburban storefront building. Um, I'm curious about this. So this is saying that only uh, only in the Thompson Fairmont one, but currently gas stations are allowed all along the commercial 196 corridor. Right, but given, um, okay. Well, and there are two gas stations currently but I'm I'm assuming that if those were not to exist anymore, new ones can't pop up. <laughs> um, and what do we want? What I mean, Angela, you're the one that carries information and experience from the Main Street plan. Um, was there? Did the Main Street plan sort of weigh in on the question of um, gas stations along that stretch? Well, on Main Street, but not on 196. Right. I mean, I this is I just didn't pick up on this earlier that we this this would change our zoning to say that we can only have fuel in Topsom Fair Mall. That just doesn't seem to match with with what's currently. Yeah. I would agree. It doesn't match and it doesn't as far as convenience for people getting off the highway or travel it doesn't make sense for them to have to turn into the mall to get gas mm -hmm. yeah i agree right so there is that one gas station there that is in the on on 196 um uh, well there's like three there's, of them yeah. <laughs> oh because there's, there's irving on the other side yeah and then the one across 295. Yep. Shell Station. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. There are three. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and I I would I would go further and say too is that, you know, unless there's a separate category for it, some of the businesses further out on 196 may have fuel for their own fleet vehicles. Yeah, that's true. And honestly, this may be addressed in the code, all the, the, what she's drafted, but I didn't pick it up. I mean, to, to have fuel pumps for a business, um, my guess is that that is in there already, but we can at least ask the question. Well, there's something 7.60.3, fuel pumps must be an accessory to a principal building. Fuel pumps on sites without a principal building may be approved. And according, I'm not sure that that pertains actually. Now that I read it, yeah. never mind. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, just, I don't think, I think they're somehow they need to be included in areas along 196. Right. And, you know, um, there's, there are, there's only one current gas station in the area that we are, that we CPIC is focused on. Um, and that is the, used to be Gibbs now mobile station that uh, is sort of on the Crooker side before you get to Crooker as you're heading toward Lisbon. Um, that's within our area, but the others are not. Um, and, and so for, you know, let's leave that to the planning board is my feeling. I'll definitely raise it in terms of that particular item where it's only, only allowed in the Thompson Fair Mall, um, to see what she has to say. Okay. I'm running out of steam. We're running out of time. <laughs> um, and I, I apologize, this is just slower going than I had hoped. Um, we, we're actually not far from 
Let's see how far we are from the end of we're we're at the end of seven. And what comes next is, is building design. There were, I don't think there were any. There was one big change in building design having to do on page eight dash two with the historic mm -hmm. district regulations. And I'm assuming that that reads in a way that makes it clear that those the regulations when they conflict historic district regulations when yeah. and other than that yeah. there's not a lot there's nothing changed there so we actually are further along than I had dreaded <laughs> um, um, 8.3 um on page on page 8.4 that um the minor facade materials table yeah uh, i noticed that um and i'm not sure why this is the case that that the way it's arranged is not alphabetical uh there are two issues one is the first one isn't labeled uh, and that I believe should be A, but it goes A, B, G, C, H, E, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And it, it, to me, is confusing uh, to have it that way. Um, and it would be interesting to know first, the, the concrete surfaces ought to be labeled. Um, but I'm curious why Leslie felt it was more effective to put them in that order yeah. as opposed to alphabetically. My, my guess is looking at that, Joe, it looks like the material is alphabetical. So if you're trying to find right. search by material, but the way it appears in the photographs, you'd have to rearrange yeah. the photographs so, or relabel re those. Yeah, that's an interesting So the code to match the photo examples yeah. is not alphabetical, but the materials are alphabetically listed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which right. I would, yeah. Oh. So does it make sense to you, Rick, that the materials be alphabetically listed and it's easier to mm -hmm. match those? Yeah. To, yeah. To me, absolutely. I'd be looking, I'm, you know, if I'm trying to find if a certain material is allowed, I'd be it's great to have that alphabetically but if that just means relabeling all the photos and rejiggering all the letters to have the letters match alphabetically but um you know along comes a new building material that gets inserted in the future and your numbering's all messed up again that's right that's right so your, your concrete surfaces does not have a photo so there's no um there's no letter there. that's right right well, you have to, um, yeah, that's, you're right. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you've got concrete masonry units. Right. Um, which has a photo. Yeah. Which is down. So we maybe want a photo. Um, terracotta and vinyl and PVC doesn't have a photo. Yeah. Well, on the next, uh, the they don't do it. Or is it up above? All right, and we're getting over six o'clock. So have, I'm sorry, I have to go. I have another meeting. Yep, I hear you. Thank you so much, Robin, for. I, I think we'll, that requires more work. Yeah, it, connection on the uh, notes later. Thank you. So this labeling business, more work. I think so. Don't yeah. You? I mean, there are yeah. the first. Of course, yeah. this is not the final draft, but right. even by us, yeah. But there yeah. ought to be a picture for every uh, material yeah. that's yeah. referenced. Yeah. yeah. Got it. And I'm putting the materials in alphabetical order. So, folks, is anybody who's here now able to stay five more minutes? Because the yeah, only good. parts of our um, discussion, I think, that are important for us to to move through today is um, if we can all of this stuff getting to Leslie is very important the just a couple words from Julie about the work that Tom sat in and gave to us and how that relates to the planning board process um, and then I think we'll close <laughs> sure. So Tom and I have been working on code cleanup items. We met with Kirk 
and went through articles one, three, four, and five. And those articles are on planning board's agenda this week. Um, and then uh, just today, I got article six, seven, nine, 10, and 11 from Kirk. So we will be meeting with him next Tuesday after um, Tom and I have gone through them and formulated our questions um, to go through that. And then I wanted to put it on planning board's agenda for the 25th, but I don't know how much we will get done that day because we already have four items on the agenda. So we'll see how that moves forward. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I think all of the other items are more, um, you know, I, I know everybody saw the piece in the crier. Um, the select board got its update. There was good engagement around that. We'll hear from Andy with his update on TDI. Um, Margaret will talk about frequently asked questions. And uh, I was so hoping that if we got through everything in a satisfactory way, we could focus our workshop meeting on the 16th for all of us who can to attend the Grow Smart Maine presentation, which is happening at exactly the same time as our workshop meeting. Um, Andy Sturgeon shared that information and there, there are panelists from Falmouth and Auburn that sound really interesting. And it's all about um, being intentional about growth, exactly what we're focused on here. And um, I think it would be very helpful for us to hear what's going on in other towns. Um, which in the meantime, I think we can be getting some responses from Leslie. So as I'm even describing this to you, I'm feeling like the utility for CPIC is to use our workshop meeting um, to all come and be part of, you know, listening to that presentation by Grow Smart Maine um, and their panelists. But what do folks think? Because it's terrific. It's terrific. Yeah. yeah. Derek has signed up. In the past, uh, Topsum has been a sponsor, and we are not at this point, but he has, Derek has signed up so that we can gather, you know, here in this room um, and hope possibly by remote, I'm not sure, um, to participate in that, to at least watch it, be, you know, observers. Any thoughts, Angela? I think that's a good idea. What I may have missed what you said is, I feel like we need to finish going through the plan and we're almost done. When are we doing that? We, we've we actually, to be honest, we've gone through the plan. I mean, okay, it's done. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, and because I thought there was more to go and there's nothing new there except this thing about... Um, um, I mean, the only thing is, and I, I agree with Joe that this on page eight dash four, the materials and the photographs need yeah, a little work. No, I that's, got that. I just didn't know if there was more beyond that that we didn't finish. <laughs> that's actually the that's the only part that actually affects us and the center of town stuff because the definitions, although they affect us, um, the, that's going to be a work in progress throughout the whole process. So I think this makes great sense then for our workshop. Yeah. All right. Any last comments before I apologize again for taking us seven minutes over? <laughs> Can you remind me of when the workshop is? It's always, it's the third Tuesday, four to 5.30. That's just that calendar. It's like, you know, and we, we use it if we need it, which we've always needed it for a while. Um, but that's when it is Tuesday, third Tuesday, four to five thirty, and um, I'll I'll look into whether or not there's an attend remotely option. I'm assuming there will be, um, but those of us who can will gather right here. All right, thanks everyone. See you on the sixteenth, if not before. Okay, yeah.